So we're continuing from where we were uh, last week, um, although there's no recording for it, so don't look for it. Um, and we are on uh, we are on that kaf uh, No, yeah. Okay. So we are. Okay. And at a different time, like we'll, I'll, I'll have a chance to. Although, Mehmet, if you you should see the first like five or six classes, they give a very solid introduction to what is this, how we look at it, how do you know what the pages are, each section, what it is, how it is. It's it's, it's online with. Uh, oh, we should ask uh, Alex. Yes, so there, there's recordings of it, and also there's actual sheets that you could print out so you can see it and you can practice it. Okay. Okay. So Daniel, just remind us. Uh, just remind us uh, what we saw last week. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of the the discussion about Pidyon Haben, about redeeming sons. Uh, we're off on a tangent right now, right? We saw that a um, um, fathers are obligated to redeem their sons, uh, mothers are exempt from it, and then we kind of and we settled that, right? And then we kind of went off on a, since we were already talking about uh, redeeming sons, we had this statement that was made at the end of the previous, previous, previous page. Uh, wait, wait, let me see. Oh, sorry. Over there. Right? No, wait. Here, over there. So we're not, we're not going to read it inside right now. But right, so Daniel, we saw that just Tan Rabbanan, someone just, is just sharing more information, right? And the uh, interesting question, which is, um, if someone has an obligation to, re- if, if, if a person has to, has to redeem himself and his son, who comes first? Okay. Um, and we, what we did last time is we broke down the Gemara, we identified the, the structure, and that's what we have here, and we introduced ourselves to a whole new, a new structural, am I, am I out of the frame? Sorry, but I'm not going to worry about it. You know, just let me take it back so I can move around a little bit more. I don't know. How's that? Good. Okay. So we introduce ourselves to a new uh, structural structural concept, which is Hakomodim. Okay? We said that this this is this from that, this point on this becomes a code word for a certain basic structure. Hakomodim is everyone admits, right, that, that, that we're, we're introduced to two opinions on something. We're introduced to two opinions, and then the Gemara will come and say, everyone agree, you know, we'll, we'll want to clarify that, that, this, that the argument is not the, the, the disagreement of Machlokat is not categorical, rather it only applies to certain cases. And then this phrase, Akomodim, it becomes a, a, a new, you know, significant function word, which, w- w- which we will see in other places as well. So everyone admits, in case in case X, so where do they disagree? Where you were quantifying the Machlokat, they, do, uh, uh, they don't disagree in this case, they do disagree in a different case, and it says, and here's the, the specific agree, uh, uh, um, argument. Okay, uh, opinion one and opinion two. Okay, and that's that's the structure that we saw. And I know right now this sounds very very vague, but after a couple of classes it becomes very clear. It becomes very very clear. Right. So that's so that's what we saw last time. Right. Okay. So um, and then I said in order to be able to now go now that we know the structure, we have the structure. We have the we have here. This is that structure. Tanu Rabbanan, which is a Meira. We broke it down last week. That's where we ended off. We have the structure, and we have a new function word with the, you know, what, what, what we expect is going to happen in this stage. And then I said that in order to be able to, our next stage usually is to just, then now we know what each stage is, to take each stage piece by piece and, and learn it and figure out what it's saying. Right? So that's the stage. But in order to do that, um, there's a few introductions, there's some background information that, that we need. Okay. Okay, so yesterday, last week, we started with, the, with there's three inter- introductions, three background pieces that we need. One is the kind which we, just, which we mentioned last week, I'll just repeat it quickly, which is that um, the mitzvah of Pidyon Haben um, uh, is done through the method of five slain. The Torah says that you need to use five uh, coins in order to redeem a, a Bechor, a firstborn son. Um, and that's uh, um, and, and, and the way the way it works is is that the father is supposed to give the the kohen these five slaim these five this amount, this certain amount of money or value of money um, in exchange for his son basically it's basically I wouldn't say that you're buying your son back from the kohen it's not that you're buying him you're redeeming him instead of him being 
he's supposed to, he's, he originally, it, firstborn son is supposed to be dedicated to the, to the Avedat Vet HaMikdash, and in order for him to be exempt from that, he needs, there's a special mitzvah, he needs to be redeemed, Pidyon. And that is done by giving a certain amount of money, or value, a certain amount of value to the Kohen. And that's the five slain. That's introduction one. Introduction two, let me just remember. Okay, just one second. Rabbi, I um, get this journal called the Journal of Halacha in Contemporary Society. And yeah. it happens that this one had an article about the uh, current value of five sliding. Really? And what did it say? I think it's about between 75 and 125 in, in together. Meaning all five? Yeah. To 125 and 175. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I mean, that, that, no, you see, because someone mentioned last week, maybe it was you, that, you know, one, I guess maybe it was you, who said, I wonder how much it is, because it needs to be, a, it needs to be cheap enough that, you know, because it's something that, that's a, that everyone's obligated to do if they have a firstborn son who's eligible, so, but not necessarily everyone could afford it, so it needs to be relatively affordable. So if you think, purport, you know, respect, respectfully, I don't know, we have to, I wonder if that, what does that take into account? Does that take into account the, the I think it's a specific weight of silver, and that's what uh-huh. depends on the silver content of different coins. Uh-huh. Okay. It's okay, you know, because when we are in Poland, when we give Machatzit a shekel, it's, it's less. Chatzit shekel, it's like, but, but, but there has to do, there's a lot of different ways in trying to figure out the equivalence of money. Because um, Machatzit shekel, there's a lot of different opinions. Is that just half of whatever the standard coin is? Is it, is it relative to a specific date in Jewish history? There's a lot of different, a lot of different opinions about how to calculate these things. So. Okay, the second introduction, let me just remember... <coughs> Okay, just a second. The second introduction um, is the following. The second introduction is that there is, uh, one of the phrases that we had here is property with a lean on them. Okay, um, the rule is in halacha, and, and some of this is probably very similar to, to property law today, or whatever it could be. I'm sure, there's a lot of parallels or similarities. Um, is it certain, certain, uh, um, certain, not property only, certain possessions, okay, that a person has um, can have halachic lean, not halachic. So it could have, from a law perspective, could have a financial lien put on them and others cannot. Okay? And the basic rule is any movable any movable object cannot there cannot be a lien against a moved, movable object. Okay? Um, versus um, versus immovable objects, mean, mainly real estate, that could have a lien on them. The simple reason that Halakha gives again none of this is information that's in our sugya. But our sugya assumes that there's certain things that we know, and without understanding it, there's no way we'd be able to understand this. As I said last week, this is an extremely simple structure of a Gemara, but quite complicated content. Whereas in the past, we've had the opposite. Very easy content, but slightly complicated structure. So, um, only real estate, okay, um, could have a lien against them. Now, the lien, a lien in halacha could go very, very far. Meaning, for instance, if there's a lien against my property because I, um, I owe you money, okay? I gave you, I, I, I borrowed money from you, and there's a contract, and in that contract it says that um, my my property, my land, is collateral. Would that be the right word? Is collateral against the loan, okay? I then go and I sell my land to you, okay? I sell it for, let's say I owe you $10,000, and I go and I send, I, I sell the land to you, let's say, let's make it easy, for $10,000, okay? And I don't give you the money. I don't give you the money. I go and I spend the money, okay? I gamble it away, whatever it is. I use it to, to buy food, whatever it is. You then come to me, and you say, uh, and you say, pay me my money. I say, I'm sorry, I don't have any money. Okay, well, I'm going to take it from your property. I'm sorry, it's not my property anymore. According to halacha, you can go to court 
and you can take the land from her. Because there was a lien on it beforehand. And not, again, I don't know how this would work today in property law, but uh, halakhically, I was unable to sell it to you. You never acquired it from me. Well, there's a discussion. Did you not acquire? Did you actually acquire it, and now it's being uh, repossessed, or is it that the, or is that the sale never actually happened? And then I'm without money, without property. What? At the end, I was out mine and was out Fine, so you would go and sue and sue me. But there was a lien against that property. I was not allowed to sell that property in, unless I had, I had paid you back. You go and you repossess my land. The fact that you paid me. Now, the truth is, what this means is that before um, you buy land, you would be smart to make sure that there are no liens against it. Mm-hmm. And it's something that we see many, many times in the Gemara that there's, there, was, there was systems in place where, or that there's an assumption that if a person buys a land he must have checked beforehand that there's no lien and you, 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 you know you would check you would make you know and I guess the way they lived back then it was not very hard to check you're not talking about you know huge cities or uh, talking about people living mainly in especially talking about land in rural areas whatever it is your problem right it's just like if you buy a car you know, you're going to ask to see all the you're going to ask to see all the papers, right? Mm-hmm. You want to make sure that you want to you want to make sure there's registration. You want to make sure that in, the insurance is paid, and right? Otherwise, it's going to be your problem, right? Mm-hmm. Uh huh. It's yeah. going to be your problem if you're buying something that does isn't legal. So uh, similar thing here. So um, so something property that has a lien against it, even if someone else has it, the person who who owns the lien or has the lien against that property, the original one, can come and repossess it. Okay, can come to court, and the court would take the land from you and give it to the Kohen. So that's introduction number two that we, uh, uh, excuse me, or to the, sorry, yeah, I just yeah, mixed my yeah, day, yeah. Uh, to pay to the person who was the, the, yeah. what? the lender, correct. So that's the, the second introduction that's, that's needed. The third introduction is there, there is a, uh, um, uh, a big machloket that again that doesn't appear here these are all things that, that the Gemara here just blurts out assuming that we know what it is okay so the third introduction here is that there's a machloket there's a disagreement about a um, let me just see the phrase okay that um, a debt the phrase that's used is milve haktuva batorah Okay, a milve, a a a a. Uh, not a lo- I'll say the phrase is the alone that appears in the Torah. Okay, that I'm just using. This is the phrase that the Gemara uses. I'm just translating it to English. Milve haktuva, milve haktuva b'Torah kishtar damya. That a, that a loan that appears in the Torah is similar to a contract. Okay, meaning that if according to the Torah I have a a financial obligation. Okay? Then halakhically speaking, it is equal to as if I, I uh, as if I there's a contract with my name on it that I owe. So for instance, in this case, if according to the Torah, I am obligated to pay five slaim to redeem my son, or myself for that matter, right? Because if I didn't right, because as we saw in a previous figure, if my father did not redeem me, I have to redeem myself, just like with a brit mila. If my father did not do a brit mila to me, I have to do a brit mila to myself once I'm old enough. So, um, if according to the Torah, because there's machloket, if a loan that is written in the Torah is like a contract or not like a contract. So, what does that mean it's like a contract? That if I, according to the opinion that says that a loan that appears in the Torah is like a contract, excuse me, that means that um, if according to the Torah I owe you, Mr. Cohen, or some Kohen, right? Any Kohen. I owe a Kohen um, five slain to redeem myself. It is because the Torah says that I have to redeem myself, as we learned in our last year. Yeah? It is as if there's a contract with my name on it that says, I owe you five slain. Okay? So there's a machloket whether that is true or not. According to one opinion, any loan or financial obligation that the Torah obligates me is as if there's a, I, as if there's a contract with my name on it that I owe the money. And according to another opinion, no, that just because it's written in the Torah that I have to redeem myself does not does not is not equal to a contract with my name on it. Okay, that's introduction number three.
this Gemara, tiny little Gemara that we that we started looking at last week, assumes that we know all those three things. One, that in order to redeem, to do the mitzvah of redemption, you have to pay a coin five slain, five coins. Two, that um, you, that a, you can only that you can put a lien that that a that a lien on. Uh, on a, on a, a lien on a pr- on property can be repossessed from someone who bought it after the lien began. Okay, and three that uh, that there is an opinion that says any loan or any financial obligation that is dictated by the Torah is is equal is legally identical to the fact to being written in a contract. Okay, those three pieces we need to know. Otherwise, you can't understand anything that's going on here. Now, if we're already talking about property, which is an interesting tidbit, you know, you can think a second, why is it that only real estate can be, there can be a lien against real estate? To the point where you can repossess it. You cannot move it. What? You cannot move it. So, but why can't you have a lien against movable objects? They can die. They can right. Because if you're saying a lien, that means the person's not paying. I can get rid of anything that's movable. Mm-hmm. I can make it vanish, right? Yeah. I can sell it. I can bury it. I can hide it. I can move it. So you could say, yeah, sure, there's a lien. It doesn't mean anything. A lien means that I'm not paying you. I'm, I'm, I'm actively not giving to you. And it's going to be taken from me against my will, right? So you can't take my sheep from me against my will because I'll get rid of it. Money, I'll get rid of it. I'll bury it. I'll burn it. I, I, whoop, I don't know. I don't know where it is. But land, okay, but land you can't get rid of. So that's why, um, okay. Another, uh, connected to that is also the fact that um, a contract, um, and the contract, how would, you know, I could very, very easily, I could identify the piece of land, right? You know, it, it, can't, it can't get confused about it. But how are you going to, going to put a lien against my sheep? What are you going to write in the contract? The sheep that the sheep that has a you know black dot on its ear, like you can't be specific. That's specific about movable objects. They can change. They can the location can change. Their their substance can change. Everything can change about them. Nothing that you can come and say here. Look, I have a lien against this. But but a piece of real estate, you can't. Move it. You can't change it. Change, okay, so, you know, destroy the, whatever, put salt on it, whatever, fine, the property is still there. The value of the property is in the property, the fact that the land itself. So that's why that becomes the, okay, that was the introduction. Okay? Can I ask a question, and maybe we have to deal with it later, but if, if what we're talking about is um, five coins, then why is the concept of lean even relevant here? Um, because the the Torah itself doesn't say um, doesn't say that wait I'm trying to think does the Torah does it not does the Torah not actually use actually does I think okay, let me check let me check let me check a second I know where to find it just one second I don't think the Torah itself says five slaim just a second. I should just clarify the question. Like, looking ahead, there, it refers to um, Hamesh Meshwabadim. Uh, I don't remember right now. Uh, but, but, the but, what? The Hamesh, is, is that referring to the five coins? Or is, um, Where? Uh, it's a little further in the. Uh, okay, you know what? Wait, so. so Wait, wait, so ask me the question again? So, um, it, it meaning, me, meaning, meaning, regardless, I don't remember right now, I just, it just slipped my mind. I don't remember if the Torah itself says five slain. I don't think the Torah, it's, we learn it from a Pasuk in the Torah, but I don't think the Torah actually says five slain. It doesn't make a difference, because it doesn't necessarily have to be in that shape. That becomes like custom to have actual five coins. There's a certain value that needs to be given. Um, and we learn from a certain Pasuk in the Torah it's actually, we learned it here in some of the Kedushim, but I forgot exactly. We learned that it should be done as five slain, but there's a certain value that you need to give me. A value of five, you have to give me the value of the current, you need to give me the value of five slain of Kesef. So I guess okay. my question is actually, um, just in terms of what the, the meaning is when, when it talks about Chamesh uh, Meshach. Okay, so let's start. So, let, so let's start. Um, and let's just try to, let's just try to uh, break it down, okay? So, 
Um, so we'll we'll do this together. Usually, usually at this point, Galia, usually at this point, we break up into chavruta, and people work in twos. Uh, and based on what we've done so far, and some key words that we put down, basically go through it. But since we're just three, we'll just do it us together. Uh, okay, so then why don't you start us off? Let's start from uh, Tan Rabbanan, okay? Um, Tan Rabbanan. At the end of Kaftet. Okay. Um, Omid Aleph. Tan Rabbanan, who lived out, who no lived out, who couldn't live now. Okay, wait, so we're going to do, we're, we're do the whole first stage, okay? So what's the first, uh, the whole first stage? Um, okay. Until right, yeah. so do it till until Rabbi. right. This is a okay, wait. So let's remember the Tan Rabbanan. So Where are you? we are the second to last. Um, right over here. Uh, just a second. No, we are right over here. Oh, okay. Now, and this is something that I'll, I'll catch you up on when when next class and when people are working or when you see the uh, the videos. Tan Rabbanan is a very is like a big flashing light. It is a quote from the rabbis of the Mishnah. Okay? And that means it will always be in Hebrew. Versus whenever you're looking whenever you're looking at Hebrew, you're looking either at a quote from the Torah or a quote from a Mishnah. Or a Tanaic source, a Mishnah. And whenever you're looking at Aramaic, you're looking at a Gemara. Quote uh, something that is from the terms of the Amoraim. So so Daniel, so read from the beginning of the stage to the end of the stage. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, no called Moshe Shazem Mitzvoto Al Abi Bazem Mitzvah Beno Al Ab. Okay, why did you stop there? Uh, we decided that the next part of our Rabbi Yirmiya is part of the is the beginning of the Hakol Mod. Okay, how how do you know that? Meaning, we yeah, we said last week. How would you know that on your own? Um, because of the. Uh, uh, well, so I guess one reason would be that if there's a basic structure to a, like a Tanaitic um, source of the um, opinion of the majority followed by maybe the opinion of the individual, that could be one reason. Okay. Maybe that's not a, uh, a watertight rule, but... It's not, uh, okay, that could be a statistical, uh, probability. yeah, probability, but there's two, so there's two, uh, two, that two that great proofs. Well, mo- so Modine... Right, because because Rabbi Yirmi, Amar Rabbi Yirmi is obviously connected to the next phrase, Hakol Modin. Modin is what language? Aramaic. Okay. So that so an an Amar Rabbi Yirmi for sure is part of is the is the opening to Hakol Modin. So that's Aramaic. So also you you mentioned before that um, Amar Rabbi Yirmi seems to be commenting on something that came before as opposed, right. as opposed to being part of the same source. Correct. Rabbi, Rabbi X says is always going to be a response. Okay? Said Rabbi X is going to be a beginning. Right. So, Rabbi Yudha Amer is basically say, like saying, but Rabbi Yudha says, so we know for sure that's part of the beginning, and Amar Rabbi Yirmiya is an opening. Okay? Versus, if it, if it were part of the Mishnah, it would say, Rabbi Yirmiya Amal, Okay, but Rabbi Yirmiya says, whereas Amar Rabbi Yirmiya is the beginning. Okay, okay. So we have our uh, uh, so we have our our Memra, and our Memra is saying, uh, you know what? You know, do you guys want to maybe break it? Uh, you want you guys want to start working together? And I can sure. Okay, so um, Alex, you'll start. What you've missed is <coughs> I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. No. Uh, um, then I'll catch you up once you get to those points. We did. There were three important introductions that. We, we really need it in order to be able to learn this piece. And now, uh, Daniel knows them. So when you get to those points, he'll explain to you what's going on. Okay, so what you're doing is, right, you're just going section, uh, and you're saying what it's doing. Okay, we just said it's a memra, and what is it saying? And you have some words here to help you figure, figure it out, and you're just piecing it together. Remember this structure, okay? We, 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 there's no reason why now in, in the 25 minutes that we have, you should be able to to finish this one. It's a very short Gemara, and now you have the information that you need. Part two. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's see what we got. Okay? Let's see what we got. Um, Alex, you want to... Uh, uh, sure. Okay, so I'll just read re- re- to where we got to. Okay, Tanu Abanan. We have the quote from the Mishnah. Who lived out of Don't Him to be redeemed, and his son to be redeemed. Who could them live? No. Okay? Uh, he, 
he gets precedence. He needs to redeem himself before his son. Rabbi Yudah Amer Beno Kadmo Shesem Mitzvato Alavi Vezem Mitzvat Beno Alav. Rabbi Yudah disagrees and says his, he needs to redeem his son first. Why? Shesem Mitzvato Alavi Vezem Mitzvat Beno Alav. Meaning, I have obligation to redeem myself and my son, but my obligation. Is my, my, the obligation to redeem myself, to redeem me, is really on who? Oh, my on my father. father yeah. My obligation is to redeem my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my father's obligation to redeem me. So my first obligation right. is to redeem my son. Yeah. Okay? So, okay? So we have two opinions. Okay? Vakasha. Okay? Continue. Okay. According to Eden. No. Oh, sorry. Amal? Um, Amal Abiyumiya? Last line. Last line. Amar Rabbi Mia, Kor Din, Kor Hekadelecha, Elechamesh Selaim, Ukodem Nevano. Good. That's the end of the stage? Yeah. Correct. Okay. So, what is Rabbi Mia saying? Well, first of all, what is, your, what is this? What stage is this? It's a uh, ma- 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 Yeah, it's a main statement. Ma- yeah, it's a statement. It's another statement. We had the statement of the Mishnah, and he's doing like a clarifying statement, right? Uh, here, right, Amengra. Yeah. Okay, he's just saying this. Don't think that they that they disagree in, in any in, in every case. Everyone agrees that there's only five slaim. That's it. That's all I have. Is the hundred? What is it? Hundred twenty-five dollars. All I have twenty-five dollars. Of course, who do I redeem first? Uh, go uh, so. uh, yourself. Right. Uh, who could definitely uh, know? Them know yeah. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Continue. Well, uh, Daniel, continue for us. <coughs> My tower. What's the what, what's the reason? What that, what stage is that? Question. Question. Obviously, mm-hmm. right? This is within Rabbi Yirmiyah's words, but it's still a question. Yeah. Mitzvah de gufe adifa. Um, that a mitzvah of his own mitzvah takes precedence over right. the mitzvah of somebody else. Right. <coughs> I mean, I have a mitzvah for myself. I before I right. Meaning, you think about it, just logically speaking, it makes a lot of sense. Meaning, how can I have obligation? Meaning, my obligation towards you is also an obligation on me first. I have an obligation to do something to you. So, if I have, I have, in both cases, it's an obligation I have. So, I have an obligation. My obligation comes first. The kids are, it's, it's just logical. Okay. Maybe. Or if, if you have a minor, then maybe the father's obligation to redeem the son is also. It's still the, no, it's still the adult's obligation, right? I have an obligation. Right. right. My son doesn't have an obligation. He's a baby. He's 30 days old. He has no obligations. It's, it's my obligation. No, that's what I'm saying. That uh, So the logic of this mitzvah with Adifa seems to be that the, the obligation of a father to redeem himself is sort of direct, and it's come somehow derivative. Uh, the obligation of him to redeem his son is somehow derivative. Therefore, we're... we're derivative saying, of his obligation to redeem himself. Or it's sort of like, it's sort of through the sun. It's indirect somehow. No, no, it's like saying, like, I have an obligation, uh, let's say, to, even if it weren't the same mitzvah, I have an obligation, let's say, to give, I don't know, and I have an obligation to redeem, I'm not sure if that would be correct, but let's say, I'm not sure, I'd have to check it. Let's say I have, a, I have an obligation to matanat uh, to, to and uh, the only money I have is the money I use to redeem my son. I have an obligation. I first have to fulfill my own obligation before I have to fulfill an obligation uh, with someone else. Mitzvah de Gufe, the mitzvah of himself, of his body himself, comes first. Okay, so I- if it's the mitzvah relating to his body, if that's literally what that means, then... Um, it could be what, what, what I'm saying is that... So if, if the case is that you have um, a, uh, an adult and then a child, yeah. the child has no obligation to redeem himself. So it's not, not like, yet. it's not like it's a secondary obligation that the father has vis-a-vis the child. It actually becomes a primary obligation for the father, for the father, and therefore. It's but, it's, but no, but it involves someone else. It's his obligation okay. towards someone else. Hey, what are you saying? He's saying no. It's not his obligation towards you're someone else. About, it's right. obligation towards himself to do something that involves someone, else, some other person. But but you know, let's let's continue, mm-hmm. okay? Because I'm supposed to do it on the thirtieth day. Yeah. So from the thir- from the thirtieth day. From third, not on third. From the thirtieth day. No. With bring me light has to be on the on the eighth yeah, day. Yeah, because this is what I wanted to say. It's if it's on thirtieth day, so he has to do it. But but if not, so it's from the thirtieth day. But fine, comes the thirtieth day, and I suddenly discovered that I was never redeemed. 
I now have at the same moment, but it's from the 30th day. I hear what you're saying. God is saying, because if it's specifically the 30th day, my 30th day has been, has been up for 30, 38 years, right? So it can wait another, uh, another bit. His, the mitzvah is specifically this, yeah. from the 30th day. Yeah. Good question. Okay, let's continue. So that would support the reverse position. What, why? Probably. Well, if it doesn't really matter if you go on, if the adult misses the, the obligation for a few more days, but if you could do the obligation right. to the son yes. in a more perfect way. Right, you're, yeah. say, right saying because the, ah, you're saying yeah. this proves that they're equal level mitzvah, because if there's a preference, if the mitzvah, ah, I hear what you're saying. Okay, good. Okay, so okay, so we have our our meva with our shela and uh, and our our our, our, our tshuva, and our, again all this here, all this is part of this of this mm-hmm. long meva of his, okay? But it's with this structure of hakol modim. So what what we're going to see now is this, right? Everyone agrees. We said everyone agrees in this case. Why? Because mitzvah de gufei Now it's going to go to they do disagree in case X that he thinks one and he and the other opinion thinks two right okay uh, Daniel you want to go ahead okay so what is the case that they do disagree in where they do disagree where what where you have where the, the man has five slain which are of land I guess which is encumbered and five which is unencumbered right so I actually have in my hand $125 worth of slaim, right? And I have another, same, that same value that, uh, in, in, in property mm-hmm. that has been sold to, to someone else. else. Now, if and Rashi clarifies this, because otherwise it doesn't really make sense, he clarifies that I sold that land after my son was born, right? So my son was born, mm-hmm. okay? And I sold my land. All I'm left with is $125 now. But there was a point before I sold the land that I owed $250. $150 to redeem myself and $150 to redeem my son. I had some of it in cash and some of it in, in real estate. I sold that real estate. Even though I was supposed to use that real estate to redeem either me or my son. Okay. Why is it necessary that, that it was sold? What? I mean, just based on the way you translated it, why is it necessary that the land has been sold? If, so if you have... No, because if I have the land and it wasn't sold, then what's the problem? Use the 125 cash to redeem him, my son, and use the value of the property, sell it, and... You know, I have I have money. Some of the money is liquid is cash. Some of the money is real estate. It's both money, right? I have to redeem both me and my son. But the, the I have the ability to. I own. I have. I have. I have money. Some of it is in lick in in, uh, in uh, actual cash, and some of it is in uh, real estate. But I have the money. But, the but now we're talking about you only have enough money to redeem one person. In all the world, all you have is the value of one hundred twenty-five dollars. That's all you have to your name. But until 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 two days ago, you had a lot more than that. Okay. So you should have used it. Well, then I have a question. What? His wife was pregnant. Yeah. How comes he just uh, he lives only hundred twenty five dollars? What? His wife is pregnant. Yeah. Maybe it's going to be boy. Okay. How you can do this? You have to to make video on a bed. How you get oh, money only for yourself? What? Well, first of all, I might be very, very poor. But he's saying, why is it that I, why is it that I was allowed to sell it to begin with? No, because the because the the chiyuv didn't start yet. Only when the baby is born, and he's a first. Meaning, what if she ends up having a uh, C-section? Then I won't have to. What happens if, God forbid, she has an abortion? Right? Then I also won't. You know, like uh, what happens if uh, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't be that would would make me not chayav. But until the baby is born. And we don't know what, a bo- and what if I don't know if it's a boy. I mean, whatever it is, until the baby is born, there's no chiyuv, there's no obligation. It doesn't start yet. But what if you had a thousand slaves at the time when you sold the property, right? Uh, you wasted it all. Now you have only 125 slaves in cash, and you have what you sold for 125 slaves 
Great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it wouldn't make a difference? I see. If all I have now... Okay, well, let's continue. Wait, wait, let's continue. Let's continue. I, just, I don't understand the case, though. Yes, um, why couldn't it be that he has 10 um, slain worth of property, five of it has been mortgaged to somebody, so somebody else has priority over No, that. not mortgage. I sold it. But where, does this, where do we get... I, I know that Rashi... I guess Rashi says... So Rashi said... Because otherwise there wouldn't be... Rashi just gets it because uh, otherwise... What's the what's the scenario? Why would why would be why would there be a problem? If you didn't sell it, if I still own it, if I still have any rights to it. But you own it, but someone else has priority over the coin. So if if you mortgage your property, like what? Well, if 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 I took out a loan okay, and scenario. you if you if you lend me money and I give you a mortgage on the property, and now Alex the Cohen is trying to claim. Well, oh, he's, good. He's, he's, he's second, oh, an example. He's second in line. line. I'm guessing it's some concept of priority. Yes. So he's the second. person who was owed first. Right. So he's second in line. I mean, I, I, I guess. No, but that's the thing. We're saying, but we have to continue. Because okay. okay, right. that's the machloket. Okay. Right. So, okay, I have five slaim that are right on the father. Mazel tov, right? I have five coins that are free. No one has any lien on them. And I have the worth of the value of five slime that were, uh, what's the word you used before? Mortgage. No, encumbered? Yeah. What does that mean? There's a lien against it. Okay, encumbered. Okay? So I have, meaning there's something that I have that, that I no, I'm no longer holding on to, but there's a lien against them. Okay? So let's continue. Which so where are we look at the structure, they do disagree in case why. That's going to give us Rabbi Yudan and Chachamim, right? So, right, because remember, one of them said that the father is first, right? That the father, not the son. Yeah. And the other one says, no, the son, not the father, right? Okay? So, let's see. Um, Rabbi Yudan, what, what did Rabbi Yudan say? Rabbi Yudan was the one who says that the son is first. Right? Yeah. Okay. Rabbi Yudha Amar... Where am I? Rabbi Yudha Savar, Milve Dikhtiv Batoa, Kiftuva Beshtar Damya. That a loan that is written in the Torah is as if it's written in a contract. So, when my son was born, the moment he was born, according to the Torah, I owe you, or any other Kohen, five slime. So according to Rabbi Yudha, because I owe you, Autumn, I owe you five slime, in this case, you, the Kohen, or any Kohen, doesn't make a difference, um, five slime, then it's as if there's a contract that says, I owe you, Alex, the Kohen, $125. If, if there is a contract that says, I owe you $125, then you can use that contract to, uh, to, to, to repossess, if I don't pay you, to repossess my property, or to take it out of my property, repossess part of my property. Is a contract the same as a lien? Yes. As, as a, a, yes. a mortgage? Yes, yes, right. absolutely. Yes. Okay. Maybe that was introduction four. Okay. okay. So, according to Abiyuda, and this has nothing to do with our topic of Pidyan Haben. Mm-hmm. It says that this is applicable to a million other cases. That milvech tuva batoa, that a loan a, 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 a debt that is written in the Torah that is upon a person, it is equal to it being written in a legal contract. Okay. And if it's written in a legal contract, then anything I own, my property, is there's a lien against my property. Or you can you can use that contract to collect your debt from me, even if it means repossessing, taking me out of my property. Okay. Meaning, you can come to me and just say, here's my contract, pay me. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have what to pay you. Fine, no problem. I'm going to court and I'm taking out of your property. But, uh, it's not it's property to anymore, to, right? What? Didn't you sell that property? Too bad. You had a lien on it. In other words, you have a lien on it. Okay. So, so Gali, I made the mistake of buying my property without checking to see if anyone has a, has a claim against my property. Her problem. She can sue me in court afterwards. But he can go to her and says, excuse me, you see this contract? You see the date? 
this date of this contract predates your your sale, your you know your 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 whatever transaction. So I am going to either pay me or I'm gonna you're gonna have to auction off a piece of your land or and pay me. Right. And she'll get all upset, but it's not. She should have checked to see that there's in the records that there's no liens against it, or asked around. Now wait, wait, we got to continue just a little bit to finish Rabbi Yuda. Rabbi Yuda says, so how would this be applied to here? So with those five, uh, meaning the five that I, the five that I have, okay, the actual cash that I have, I would use it to redeem my son, okay. And then Azil Kohen, what's Azil? The Kohen will could go. The Kohen can go to the buyer, to the buyer and Talif collect from the property that has a lien against it. So it's so so it's Ravida is not saying that one of them gets redeemed, one of them doesn't. That he said everyone agrees. If only one person is going to get redeemed, it's got to be the father himself. Because right. he has a first obligation to himself. Right. First fulfill your own obligation then fulfill an obligation for someone else. It says the question is, no, they're both going to get redeemed. The question is, who's going to get, to, who's going to get redeemed first? So Ravida says, because there's a lien, because, because an obligation um, constitutes a lien, basically, therefore, I'll first fulfill my obligation on myself, and then, Mr. Cohen, you want to know where the other five are? Go over there and you can collect it. Okay. But why is this even a different case? Like, so if you have you have one hundred twenty-five dollars in cash, and then you have property which you already sold, that's now subject to a lien. But it was subject to a lien before I sold it. I shouldn't have sold it. The moment my no, son was born, but that's fine. But I should I should have well, known. No, no, but not the moment the son was born. But you didn't redeem yourself. So there was a lien on it even before your son was born. Correct. By the way, if you're looking for a great business <laughs> as a Cohen. You could go based on this. That means you could go around. I mentioned this thing last week. Yeah. You could go around, and any right. This is what it's saying here. That's it's saying here that the Cohen could go and collect from all the people that bought property or pro- or anything that could have a lien against it from people who didn't redeem either themselves or their sons. Mm-hmm. It's a great business. You could go to anybody who would hold by the ruling of eighteen. <laughs> And who has the second court wouldn't last when they had it? Twenty five dollars. Listen, I had twenty five dollars. You know, enough people. I'm sure. Right. Right. <laughs> so what's um? Wait, do we, wait. Does anyone understand what he's saying here? Again, all this is the words of Rabbi Yirmiya, trying to explain, to quantify, to qualify. That is the machlok between the Rab, Rabbanan and Rabbi Yuda. So. Yeah. But how is that a different case, though? Then what? Because the first the first case where everybody agrees is there's only five slime. Yes. Okay? The second one is you have five slime in hand, and then you have something that will take some effort to go get. Yes. Okay. So it says first redeem from the from the five that you have as loose cash, you redeem yourself. Okay. And right, you redeem yourself. That's and that's then Rabbi Yehuda says. Yes. Uh, no, no, doesn't he say do the the, it says the, the son first with the. Ah, oh, you're right. Sorry, 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 sorry. Right. Back, right, with the loose one, you receive no, 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 your son. I'm wrong. Yeah. No, I'm wrong. I think because the, if you go back to. Look, parik libre. I use the five that I have from the loose cash. Mm-hmm. Um, to uh, for my liquid uh, assets, but right? Honey, honey does not refer to uh, these. But. In the order that these no these five no no okay. these five I I, I I do to redeem my son but as in Cohen I say Cohen you want to redeem you know you, you yeah. know right my son so go to that guy okay that's for me if you want to right so I give you the five for my son okay because that's what Rabbi Yudas said Rabbi Yudas said but this Rabbi said your, your son first so I have. Five right here, right here and available. Yes. So Vida, okay, this is for my son. Miss Cohen says, Well, excuse me a second. Wait a second. What about you? Me, you're right after, but I don't have anything left. Because first I have to fulfill for my son. Yes. Right? As Vida said, because the main obligation to redeem me is on who? 
on my father. If my father doesn't do it, I need to do it. But my first obligation, according to Rav Yuda, is towards my son. Now, I can redeem both. But, my, but who should I redeem first? I can redeem both. And everyone agrees that if you can only redeem one, I have to redeem myself. I first have to fulfill my own obligation towards myself. But I can redeem both. But one can be redeemed in a second, here. And the other one is going to take some time and some effort. So I can redeem both. So my primary one is, again, if there's only room for one, I, I have to take care of myself first. But if I can do both, it's just a question of which one should be done first. So Avita says, first, towards my son, okay, liquid cash, and the other one, oh, listen, I want to redeem myself too, so go to that guy and repossess part of his land, right. because I kind of owed it to you, but I sold it already, and I wasted all the money on the slot machines, mm-hmm. okay, whatever, so I'm redeeming myself, but that will take more time, so it's going to be later, it might take a day, it might take a year, who knows how long the court case will take. But you might never get it, and that's why... You could get it. Meaning, okay. your money for the Kohen, your money, it's there. It's right there in that in the land that that guy thinks is theirs. Well, to simplify that, can't you just say... It's there. Yeah. To simplify, say, if you have ten or more slaves, you always have to redeem your son and then yourself. Like, priority, the first one goes to the exactly. son. That's what the abuser says. Yes, yeah, so the argument here is, the only argument here is about the five slaves that you, the land that you sold to somebody else. Can a coin take Wait. it or not take it? That's the only argument. It's not about... Right, you see what I'm trying to say? Is that the... It's Wait, wait, you know what? Wait, no, not exactly. Let's continue. So, right. so Revuda, like, we've got to finish, okay? Revuda, we saw. Now look what Rabbanan said, because Rabbanan is going to have the opposite opinion. They're going to think, they're going to say, let's see, the Rabbanan Savre, and the rabbis hold, okay, a, a, a loan or an oblig- a financial obligation that is dictated by the Torah is not like it is written in a contract. And therefore, what happens over here? V'hilkach, Mitzvah de Gufayadif. And since, right, all I have is $125. Right. Right? And the fact that I sold, that yes, uh, 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 meaning, meaning I tricked the Kohen, I tricked Hashem, right? I got out of my obligation because still, I knew. He still owes you. But I said, yeah, but he can't do anything about it. Meaning, I knew that, 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 that I'm going to have to use the value of this property to redeem. Either me or my son. I don't want to wait. I don't want to waste my property for that. Right. I'm going to sell it to yes, someone. That's my question. I'm going to sell it, and I'm going to do. I don't know. I'll I'll hide the money. I will buy. I will. I don't know. I'll waste it on gambling. Whatever it is. All I'm left with is 125 dollars. The five slime. So if I only have, okay, you cannot get your hands on my land because too bad, I sold it, and it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I tricked the system. I did it. Right? Okay, whatever it is. All I have is five slime. So who am I going to use it for? On myself. Because that everyone agrees if only you have all you have is five, right? You have to do it as yourself. So according to so according to, so so Rabbi Yehuda says that's the machloket. Probably it's not if you only have five. That everyone agrees. Question is, and again, this has nothing to do with pidyon haben. There's a machloket that has to do with the laws of liens on yeah. liens based on you know. Again, that's why I said, without knowing this concept of, mil, of this, this, all these introductions, there would be no, no, no way to understand this Gemara. But this Gemara assumes that we know all that stuff. So it's actually a very simple Gemara. Right. Very, very simple. Like, like, like we said, it's, it's like, it's, 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 it's a, you know, there's a Memra and another Memra. That's it. There's a Memra followed by a Memra. Just the Memra is a little complex. Everyone agrees that in the case of there's only five slime that he comes first because you always have to fulfill the obligation towards yourself first. They disagree when there are five that you have as liquid crash and five that you have in land which you sold already. But you sold it after the obligation existed. And because Chachamim and Rav Yudah disagree on the laws of property, then in this case, it comes out to a difference in opinion what you would do with Pidyon Habit. That's the sugya. That's it. I said, it's really simple structure, but it involves concepts that are like heavy duty concepts from property law. And, and uh, yeah, from property and acquisition law.
That's it. That's the signal. Why is a star necessarily the same as a mortgage? Because I could say... I'm not sure what you mean when you say mortgage. I know what the, what the word so means. I'm not sure what you're asking. If you lend me money, I can yeah. do two things. I could just write something that says, I agree to pay you back, period. And I owe you, right? Right. Okay. Or I could say, I agree to pay you back, and if I don't, you can have my property, right? I mean, I'm putting up my property as collateral. I, don't, I mean, I don't know much, but the star... A star is not an IOU. A, a, I, mean, a, I mean, a star is not just a, an IOU. It's an IOU that can be used in court against you. Yeah, but so can I. I, I mean, but so I what's the difference? The difference is that in one case... I mean, but, I, I the question is, do you have a hold yes. on my thing already right. now? The, the answer is yes. A star, it's it's a, it, it, it means that you have, That's you have a hold, yes, yes. And you so have a hold on my property. But a star doesn't always mean that, because a star could just be... No, again, it doesn't mean that I own part of your property. Right. It means that if you do not, if you do not uh, 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 respect this obligation that you have, I can go to court and use this to get, uh, to, to, uh, to force you to sell your property and to give me my money. So I'm not sure what would you call that. What, if what would you call well, that in today's law? I'm not sure what you would call that. I don't own. I have a lien. I don't know. What does it mean? I have a lien. I, I don't own. It's not. Like, it's not like. Again, when it was a mortgage, I think it's. I think the bank actually technically owns they a portion, they just, a they, percentage of my house. They don't, they don't own it. They have the right to take it. But that's. But that's not the only. Meaning, isn't it like that? I don't fully own my. I don't fully own my house until I paid off my mortgage. So it's no, you do, but the the, more, the the bank has like sort of a contingent. So security. that so there's not contingent. Yeah. So there's not contingent. You owe me money. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay me, I can use this to get what you owe me out of your land. I don't owe why, many. Why is it necessarily? Okay, I mean, this is really in a different suit yet. Right. Like, I'm just because I, I don't think that a star necessarily always includes a pledge of property. Right? No. It has it, the option of using this. You're right, it doesn't. But it has the option of using it. So if, if I if I borrow money from you, and I just write a document that says I agree to pay you back a hundred dollars. Right. So that would not be that, that, that would not that would not that I don't I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I don't think that would be enough. There's a certain there's certain rules about you, what constitutes you can change for the money. But and there may be some other way that you can get the money, but you can't necessarily take my property as uh, no. I don't pay. No, there's certain, there's, there's there's, there's, there's certain, there's, there's certain yeah. language mm -hmm. that needs to be used in order to make it like there's something called an aputiki, uh, whatever. There, there's certain that's 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 that's, mm -hmm. that's uh, contract law. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, but over here, so you asked me an excellent question. Like when you say that, that when the Gemara here says that milvek to bashtar and milvek to bashtar kishtal damia. What does that mean? Like, like a random IOU? Is it like, oh, as if it is a contract that fulfills all the halakhic uh, necessities of a contract of this type? So for the, no, for to answer that, we would have to look at the origin of that makhlaket and see exactly what it means. Which I, I don't there, know. There are, there are other there. practical differences you could have, you could see between a situation where, um, you know, I owe you money because I'm a, a Yisrael and you're a, a Kohen, and on the other hand, I owe you money, and it's as if there is a document because I'm assuming that if you decide to take me to court, the fact that there is a document or the equivalent of a document means that uh, the burden is on me to prove that uh, you know I already paid you or whatever. The, the, the fact that I owe you money is documented. Right. right. So it doesn't have to go to the extent of right. So you're saying I like instead of saying like so how would this work in the real world? The Cohen would go to the Beidin and say, okay. I want to repossess this guy's land because he's not, like, how do you prove such a thing? Where's your star? Right. And right. If, and if you had... So, right. so uh, good question. I don't, I don't know how that would actually work. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure it actually has to work in practicality. Mm -hmm. I think Rabbi that just says, like, on a theoretical level, fine. Uh, like, I, I, I have the ability, the fact that you have difficulty, Mr. Cohen, executing this, this, uh, this possibility, that's not my problem. Mm -hmm. But... I have five that's loose cash, fine. Let me fulfill my obligation towards my son. That's first. Because my, my first, I can redeem myself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm giving it to you. It's right over there. Look, here's, I have ten slime. Here's five. Take it for my son. Now for me, I have five. It's right over there. Go take it. 
oh, I can't because that guy will shoot me if I go on his property. Fine. I'm telling you, it's there. Sue him. Take him to court. You can. Now, that guy will probably put up a fight and say, prove to me that you, after you left, the Cohen will then, he'll probably, if I'm, if I'm golly, I'll say, well, Mr. Cohen, can you prove to me that Rabbi Spitz never went through Pideon in order for me to, to claim, and that, that he never went through Pideon? No, Alex can prove that, so I'm not sure how actionable this is. But it would be like saying, listen, I have ten, bu- ten slime, five right here, and five are my slime. They just, I, put, I left them in Galia's house. So go take them right over there. Well, you know, so Alex goes, but, but Galia is saying, saying, no trespassing, you're coming, I'm going to shoot you. My, my, uh, my home is my fortress, whatever the thing's called, right? Um, it's right there. The fact that you can't get it, it's not my problem. To me, what I'm I, from a little bit different uh, side. What do I mean? He's coming to me and tell me and tells me, you have to pay Diona Ben for your son. You did for yourself. Now, don't I have my free will? I wanted. Why do you care that I take the, the, the system? Yes, I, I did this because I don't want to pay. How come he comes to me and tells me, okay? No, it, I, I, you, you're right. Because what I'm, I see no, no, here, no, no, the, no, the way the way I'm presenting it is a little. I, I, uh, I I'm presenting it a little like uh, a, you, in a controversial you, way. You talk and say what? You talk and say. Yeah, no, so because yeah, I come to you and say, listen, I want to redeem my son, and I want to redeem myself. Now, like I, I, I need, uh, but I only have here five. So according to our view, Dan, you, I, I can do my, I, I first I do for my son, and the other one, again, on a theoretical level, I'm saying to you, I, I can't, I, I'm willing to, I want to, here, it's right over there, so go take them, or I can go, t- or I can go, you know, but I'm saying, uh, from an argument perspective, Rabbi is saying, my son is first, because I have more money that I could use to redeem myself, so when you have the option of both, which one goes first? The sum. The fact that my five are not actionable right now, fine, but I'm saying I can it's on a theoretical level. So I have an obligation towards my son first. Okay, so we'll end here.